<coughs> five interviews, five unique perspectives. Red Abba fully. I'm Charlotte Danso. I'm Teresa Salifu. Uh, my name is Pauline. It's Charles Clifford Busumchi. Different stories. Now I'm grown old, so I should come for my children to take care of me. That's why I've come here. And since I've been here, I've been here for almost two years. My daughter had started having her children, so I moved here to come and be with them to look after the children. So right now I'm with my daughter and the husband and my grandchildren. Uh, right now I'm with my house help and my daughter has just moved in. Uh -huh. uh, the house is uh, for my husband and he happened to uh, gain a scholarship so he went to Japan to do his masters and then I stayed back here to take care of the children and I've lived here for I think uh, from 1995 to now is what do the mathematics for me years. Uh -huh. for about uh, yeah 26 years uh, we came here uh, 1992. Connected by one common trait. Six days more for me to be 80 years. I am 70 years. 64. And I'm, I'm going to 81. They're old. It's, 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 let's say it has very different facets because, mm -hmm. first of all, the majority, I mean, up to about 93% of the old people want to stay at home yes. as long as possible. Unfortunately, the, most of our um, house, houses or housing apartments, whatever, are not adequate for older people. I think 85% mm -hmm. of the senior households, so that means over 65, are not barrier free. You see, first when it was starting, I even didn't know it was glaucoma, a glaucoma or what. You know, sometimes we're walking, I see we are falling into a valley. <laughs> and then you'll be missing your steps. I've had arthritis, my right knee. So I can't walk properly. Yeah, it hurts. You can see that, you see my, my two legs, you see. It's swelling. Mm. We've, we've done all so many things, you know, but still yet the pain is there. I think because of the architecture of the house, uh, uh, most of the times I fall. Sometimes I slip. Uh, you see, so on several occasions I've fallen like that and I've hurt myself. So uh, when I'm moving, I, I'm always careful. Uh, that is what uh, I've seen, especially with the terrazzo, it's always when water sp spills. Mm -hmm. You are not lucky, you just sleep now, now. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I'm always careful when I'm walking. Uh -huh. Yeah. <clears throat> I fell once on these stairs, but it's a funny way of falling. I was climbing. Mm -hmm. I know you fall when you are descending. descending. Yeah. But <laughs> so I laughed over it. Uh, I said, ah, How can you fall when you are climbing? I just slipped, yeah. and uh, I'll show you the room. Mm. But I, I have sometimes I have a knee problem. Mm -hmm. One time my son came and took me to the orthopedic surgeon, and they gave me injection. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think on once he took me. At another time I went with somebody else. Mm. But that's all. Mm. Uh, this, the knee. Today is this one, tomorrow is this one. Mm. So I say, ah, what is it? Mm, but I haven't had a stroke. <clears throat> I was there and I was not feeling fine. I saw that I was coming down, coming down, not knowing that I'm getting stroke. Mm. So I got it. After the 
medical exam, everything, and they said everything is okay with me. It was after that, a week or so after that, the stroke came in. And I didn't know that it was stroke. I had it on the first with the leg, yeah. and I could not walk well. I was, <laughs> I didn't know how I was walking. It was bizarre. I couldn't stand and walk. Uh -huh. And then, some days after, it hit my head, walked through my mouth. Uh, when I was speaking on telephone, I didn't know what was, and then, my brother's son took the telephone from me, and that was all. So I was sitting down. When I'm going to bath, I sit on the chair and do a, and So my daughter was busy doing, taking care, taking me in. I will walk in, but coming out, I will come. But when I'm bathing, I'm afraid of everything, even to fall. I was afraid. But before that, I was, uh, one day I fell in the bathroom my head hit the wall and everything what happened in the hall was this this beam i've been hitting it mm -hmm. uh -huh. i've been hitting it where it i don't know whether it's an advantage or disadvantage or what when, when the light went off and i went to uh, see was well, then you see that i hit it this one especially this part of the you see what i'm talking i don't know the name Mad and the one just by you. hey that one, hey, that one been hitting it a lot. I, I I really feel that it wasn't there. Even my grandson also hit his head there. Mm. What is barrier free? It's not only barrier free; it's also inclusive because it's not only having accessibility and um, enough space to move around in the in the housing mm -hmm. situation in the apartment or whatever. It's also social intervention. It's creating areas in the outer spaces where one can meet and get together, community rooms, and so on. Mm. Uh, my wife became very ill. Mm -hmm. uh, she was showing signs of weakness and wasn't fine and so on. So we went to several hospitals and they finally found that she had some growth in the stomach that uh, maybe they could operate it. And somehow within a few months, months would I say, no, weeks, maybe about seven weeks or so, she succumbed to the illness. And that was the end. My big daughter was living here. Okay. Uh, oh, she looked after me very well until uh, they said, uh, "Man, we had them. I don't know whether you understand that. Uh, when one we had, that is fancy. Means you are." behaving like uh, you are becoming yabby yabby you they say one you say two and so on and so so she packed and went to her house and my daughter yeah. virtually she does almost everything for me when my granddaughter was here she saw how i was suffering she was doing almost everything for me before she she had to go to school again i i need help so they have to do it for me. So sometimes I feel that I'm burdening them. See, the person is doing something and just, oh, please, can you call this person for me? <laughs> you see what, how it feels. Uh -huh. So uh, that, that is what happens. Uh -huh. Hi, good morning, Hi. madam. Morning, how are you? I'm doing all well yourself. I'm very well, thank you. I'm a lawyer by profession, worked my whole career in law. Okay. And, um, but I always kind of seem to gravitate towards the elderly. I don't know why. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought I liked hanging out with old people. Okay. And I just found expression in me visiting parents of my friend, my friend's parents, my own elderly relatives. Okay. I mean, so anywhere, if I went into a gathering and there were older people, I tend to sit with them, chat with them rather than hanging out with people my own age. Okay. And then increasingly, I, I realized that anytime I visited people, they seemed to be very bored. Their companion was always the radio, sitting, listening to radio all day or watching TV. Yeah. And I started exercising my mind. What can I do to help uh, these people? Okay. Thinking about it, I thought, okay, um, during the day, as we said yesterday, their children, even when they are staying with their children, their mm-hmm. children go to work, grandchildren go to school. Mm-hmm. And when they live alone, um, it's even worse. So they look forward to the uh, calls from their children, which for some are very um, few and far between. So I thought it would be nice to have them go somewhere during the day where they can see people who are their age, chat with them, do play with them, uh, and, and, and keep them a bit busy rather than just sitting at home and um, listening to the radio. I listen to radio too. But the thing that I, I do most, which will anger people, is watching football. <laughs> but not, excuse me to say, not Ghana football. I watch the European League. Mm. Uh-huh. The other sports I like is tennis. tennis. I, I watch tennis. Almost like I do love football, but only at the highest level. And my idol is Roger Federer. Uh, now he's old. So you say he's not the only one going over. I'm also going over. Uh, My wife's favorite is Nada. My wife and Nada. Uh, when Nada loses, loses so uh, much. My wife won't talk for hours. Mm. I think because now all the children have moved away. Uh, those kind of hustle and bustle that used to be around is all gone. So you come in, you see that the place is quiet. Hmm. I don't do anything. I just walk to friends I have one teacher, uh, headmistress, uh, I taught at her school for some time, just for free for some time. So we become brothers and sisters and I, when I don't feel fine, I just walk to a place we, at South Labadi, we chat a little and I come just to keep me going. That's all. That's all I do. I don't work, do any work. I think in future it possibly will be easier mm-hmm. and it might also be easier because many, not the majority, but there more and more are people growing older that start thinking about how do I want to live when I'm old? Mm-hmm. I don't want to live with my, I, don't, I can't live with my family because we are spread over the country or over the world yeah. because the family situation is just disrupted and not what it used to, disrupted and not what it used to be like. So mm-hmm. how do I want to live in future? And, and many um People growing older start um, start really getting together into groups or developing the idea um, of maybe um, forming an own, an own group, mm-hmm. looking for building sites. So the network is a non-for-profit organization um, and it was founded about 15 years ago as a um, co- kind of co-op, not, not cooperative, as a um, com- community of some groups in Frankfurt who created a self-reliant and self-organized housing projects um, or living projects. So people gathered and formed a kind of neighborhood before they moved in. They said they wanted to live together and create um, some kind of housing uh, with a a community room or where they 
care for each other. When I was a young woman, I was a housewife. So I was always with my husband. I didn't make friends. I was either in the house or mm, I didn't have friends. Don't, don't come to me again. I don't, but if you come, I will receive you. Mm, those who come, I receive them. But hardly do they come. Mm, I mostly visit them. Visit them instead of them visiting me because they will promise me they won't come so i will go uh, uh, my daughter not often mm. but she does come mm. and but my son where they are living now they don't have a garage mm. and they have two cars the wife's car and her, his own car so one is parked in the garage here. Therefore, they have to come at least to pick the car. Uh, so, and my son does very well. The time he comes here to pick the car, mostly I'm in the bathroom having my shower. So he comes to the back of the, the window and says good morning. And then, how are you, how are you? And if he has something to say. Uh, you know, if it had been the village environment, like my hometown, uh, like every day, by all means, you see people pouring in yeah. to see how you are, and then they'll go back. But here, because it's a city, nobody cares about anybody, you know. You see, right now I'm alone, yes. But if you, but right now my mother is there, but if you go, plenty of children around, oh, running around, a whole lot of children, and I mean, I love to even be there. But right now, because of education, you see that you are educated. Now, look, everybody is gone. You are alone. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so if my other one go, I can't say she should be here for, forever. There be, she would marry and go. And there, then I would be, begin to have uh, take a decision as to uh, what to do. It's really terrible. But, well, that is modernity. <laughs> I mean, providing an avenue for them to socialize with their peers, mm -hmm. it's, it's been a plus, plus, plus. Mm -hmm. um, it's given them an opportunity to talk to people mm -hmm. rather than uh, listen to the radio. Um, um, it's given them an opportunity to learn new things. Mm -hmm. Our beading class is the most Sub, it's over, always oversubscribed. We're always trying to find additional space to fit people in. Um, and they, they come showing you what they beaded, what they've done for, to go and give us a gift to a grandchild or, you know. And I know it keeps them active. It's like the lady I was talking about, about the crochet and, and trying to knit all kinds of things. Yeah. And I know that that kind of activity, it keeps the mind away, helps save off dementia and all of those things. As I said, they call each other to chat. Mm -hmm. um, um, they find the dance classes and the exercise classes keeps them physically fit. Mm -hmm. We try to do dance moves, which they, they used to do in their time. Mm -hmm. So just the reminiscing and things uh, brings a lot of excitement. I've seen them lose their shyness. So people who started off not talking to many people or keeping to themselves, now they've become more open. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, an, it's been an avenue for them to release stress as well. Yeah, okay. So you can look at it this way, that everyone, man, woman, child, elderly, um, old, aging, um, wants to be able to feel capable of certain basic processes um, that happen within space. It, it can't even really be about just one, uh, one single group or another. 
Um, everyone wants to be in control, be comfortable, feel safe, um, managing their daily routine um, and so that there isn't so much um, a sense of a routine of care. The, 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 um, what you have to, to um, take in mind is that there are some lifestyles where it's very important to think about um, your housing environment because your the, the, the distances you do every day, they decrease when you're older, when you have children, when you're sick. So some people are all over the city all the time and others are more located. And that's the, the background. They say when we are older and our um, uh, mental and physical um, abilities decline little by little, mm -hmm. then our apartment gets more important and our neighbors are more important. I don't travel all day long through the city to see my friends. Yeah. I need them close by. It becomes very key um, to not just think of the architectural brief, the traditional architectural brief for a house, um, as one that is static. It becomes very necessary to allow for that brief to transform, to almost disintegrate, and for you to begin to look at housing or living in a very different way than um, just the standard 2.0 family. This care of the friends or of the neighbors are not, um, are not supposed to be real physical care. It's, it's, they, they decided we need to have professional care from the outside. Mm -hmm. Maybe some person can be, live in this uh, room for, for a certain time. But it's so important to have friends or caring people nearby who say, okay, let's watch TV tonight, or did you drink enough? Or, oh, I, I have a newspaper I read for you, or my, my children are there, they want to visit you. So this, this, um, this type, type of care is so important. And this group decided to have this neighborhood so that they can live this type of care. Yeah? So that it's in normal apartments, normal structures, it's so difficult to do that. It's, it's very interesting that we begin to look at typologies um, like this that um, pay particular attention to um, aging in place and being able to have the, the home extend um, through to another um, generation. I think it's, um, it's a very important aspect that we're probably missing a lot and within that context. As architects, we recognize the role we play in shaping the world we live in. What we have to realize is that we are building something bigger than just structures. We're building lives. Every line we draw, every brick we place, we are responsible for the hopes and dreams of those that put their trust in us. It reminds me of the Dorian Yates quote that says, every day is like a building, and each time we step out into the world, we're either laying down a brick or someone else's. This rings true for us as architects, Whatever decision we take on a project, we are not just laying bricks and buildings, we are laying bricks into lives. And we must be damn near sure that these bricks we are laying are strong enough to last a lifetime. <laughs>